So, as board gamers and board game reviewers, we're often talking about the new games that we're buying and the new games that are coming to our collection, the games that we're looking forward to, the anticipated games, etc., etc., blah, 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 blah. And, you know, that's great. And, and I've definitely uh, enjoyed that kind of content and created and uh, consumed a lot of it myself in the past. But what I wanted to do was perhaps take a slightly different approach and talk about the games that have left my collection and why those games have left my collection. So in this series, the exit interview, I'm going to be going through different games that have left my collection and uh, why I've let them go. And these will be some games that I've let go in the past. And going forward, I hope to uh, keep this up and talk about other games that leave my collection and why. And I think it's just a question of bringing this aspect of board games a little bit into the light because it seems that every hobby board gamer I meet or, or relatively serious board gamer that I meet goes through this purge every now and again. Uh, there was actually quite a few people on Twitter over the beginning of January and throughout January who were purging their collections and getting rid of a lot of games to make room for new games or perhaps just clear up their shelves or what have you. So getting rid of games and letting games go is a natural part of the board game circle of life. So why not discuss it? And to kick this series of videos off, I wanted to talk about one of the uh, best games that I've ever played, which is Viticulture. So if I love this game so much, or I thought this was such an amazing game, why the heck did I get rid of it? Well, let me circle back to that in a minute. But firstly, let me talk a little bit about why I really like this game. And firstly, I think it's the theme. It's very non-gamer friendly. Uh, it worked really well with my wife and with friends and family who were not into games, helping them uh, get excited about the game, but also helping them explain how the game works because it's very, very thematically uh, tied the different actions that you have to take in the game, which makes explaining and teaching the game uh, a real breeze. And that's great. And also looks fantastic. The artwork from Beth Sobel is really stunning. And um, it's very sort of whimsical and and sort of uh, relaxing as a game to play, not too cutthroat, not too much meanness or uh, negative interaction, so to speak. So all those things really make the game uh, a pleasure to play. And actually in the first weekend that I got this game, I played it six times. I don't think I've ever played any game that many times in such a short space of time. And I went on to play it the following weekend and the weekend after that, playing it mostly at two player, but sometimes with the uh, solo player Automa, sometimes with four, et cetera, et cetera. So got a really good flavor and experience playing the game. And I actually wrote a review last year around why I enjoyed the game. And fundamentally, none of those reasons changed, or, or at least most of those reasons didn't change, reasons for me liking the game. But after putting the game on the shelf and coming back to it a few months later, um, I, I picked it up, played it with my wife, and we both kind of just felt that it fell a little flat. Not exactly sure why that was, uh, at least in first pass, didn't really quite realize why it was, but it just felt a bit, hmm, ho-hum, um, didn't really feel like it retained that magic and that excitement that we had when we first played it. And... I'd actually even bought um, the Tuscany expansion at the time to try and reinvigorate our passion for this game and, and extend it a little bit. And, and we tried playing with that. And to be honest with you, my initial impression was that it just seemed to add a lot of extra bits and pieces without much extra depth and strategy of play. Now, of course, there are other ways for you to score points besides the wine contracts, but for the base game, and even within Tuscany, that's still a core mechanism. And in particular for the base game, um, that was one of the issues that I felt fell a little flat for me after coming back to the game after a, a period of time was that it just felt a little bit repetitive. Yeah, you know, you're planting your vineyards, you're harvesting your wine, you're maturing the wine in the casks and on the vines, etc. And, and then you're trying to fulfill these wine contracts. And it's a little bit luck driven. You might not pull the ones you want. You might get the wrong cards. You might get the wrong uh, vine cards. You might get the wrong um, contracts for the sort of engine, the wine building engine that you've been setting up throughout the game. And I think that just left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. And that was one of the key reasons where I, where I started to think, well, I actually don't know if I really need to keep this game in my collection anymore. And I didn't really go into too much more thought about it at that point. I think after I'd reached the realization that I wasn't enjoying it as much, my wife wasn't enjoying it that much, that pretty much eliminated, eliminated the reason for me to keep it in my collection. Um, I um, ended up uh, letting it go, selling it on, 
to uh, some uh, another gamer here in London. And you know what? I don't actually really regret it that much. There's some times where I get that little pang of like, hmm, maybe a nice quick game of Viticulture would be good. And it's not a game that I would avoid playing by, by, by any means. You know, if, if I was in the right circumstances, somebody said, hey, do you want to try it out? I'd probably be up for trying it. Although I am a little bit of a cult of the new fanatic, so I tend to try and use my gameplay sessions to explore new games. That aside, though, I think one clear thing to mention about this game, as I said at the beginning, is that I do really think this is a great game. I think everybody who's coming into board gaming should experience this game because it is it got a really beautifully balanced um, sort of it's a beautifully balanced experience in terms of the complexity and the depth. It's, it's quite simple, quite light, but there are quite a few nice moving pieces that serve as a really good introduction to more complex worker placement games. Um, the two player scaling in this game is also fantastic. Some of the best two player worker pla placement scaling I've experienced in a game. And I think the other point to mention is that getting rid of a game doesn't always mean that you think the game is bad. But at the same token, if I play this game 10, 15 times, it might just be that for my personal taste and my personal mentality, that's enough. You know, like that game may have just been played out, you know. Um, and actually, I think for the cost of this game, which is, you know, anywhere between 30 and 50 pounds or dollars, substitute for dollars or whatever, um, that's a pretty good return on investment in terms of pleasure and enjoyment that you're getting for this game. So I have no regrets and, and no problems with that whatsoever. And I have no hesitation in recommending people try this game out. But I think just be aware that if you're perhaps a heavier gamer, you're used to more uh, in-depth games, you might find the slightly one-dimensional scoring aspect a little bit dull uh, or a little bit unfulfilling. Um, but then again, that might be something that you're interested in looking at just because you want a light, lighter and more whimsical experience. So overall, I still think this is a great game, but I did... Uh, take it out of my collection it did exit my collection and that's been my general explanation of why that was the case of course I think a lot of these things boil down to personal preferences and tastes sometimes the decisions aren't always logical they're more of a gut decision I think but um, I'll be talking about more games that I got rid of going forward in this series so if you want to uh, feedback to me catch me on Twitter at Game Minimalist uh, obviously leave some comments and subscribe here on YouTube and I'd love to hear about games that you've gotten rid of, games that you've let go from your collection uh, and how you felt about that and why you made that decision. In the meantime, enjoy your games and thanks very much for your time, folks.